we want to talk about is uh, jubilation in uh, Ireland as the people vote for the legalisation of uh, abortion. Now, let me be very frank about this. In a house full of women, and um, well, with many, many women friends, uh, with, uh, with, with daughters, this is something, by the time you get into your 50s, has happened a bit, okay? And, you know, abortions has, has happened. And so, as a man, I think my opinion counts less. Again, it, it, if you think I'm wrong, then fine. Because men, if they try to claim a voice in, on this uh, subject, if it's not the voice that people generally like to hear, if you don't tell the party line or if you feel something, even from the heart, I don't know whether you're allowed, actually, to have a strong view. You ought to be able to, because two people make a child, whether that child is born or not. But um, so one element of the question is, you know, is it right that men have zero say in any of this? I suppose so, because it's a woman's body that we're talking about and her welfare. 03456060973. But I wonder if anybody else feels as um, abortion is legalised in Ireland, anyone else feels slightly uncomfortable that unborn children no longer have the same right to life as the mother? Because that's the reality of it. Should we be celebrating this result in Ireland? Do you consider this uh, progress? Look, and I know, and if you, by the way, if you do call in uh, and if you wish to remain anonymous, very happy if you do so. But this is, it's just another, it's another of these subjects and a, and a really important one, of course, where if you have the right attitude in media circles and metropolitan and um, city circles, if you have the right attitude, then fine, you're acceptable. If not... I think you're going to get shouted at. I know the emotions are very strong on this. Uh, so I want to take uh, your views. Now, the, the facts are that this only permits abortion up to 12 weeks. Between 12 and 24 weeks, it's only allowed an abortion when the risks of fetal abnormality or if there is a serious risk of harm to women. It's a social and a cultural earthquake in, in Ireland. Absolutely must be. What about the uh, Catholic Church? What about their influence? I mean, when you think about it, 40 years ago, contraception was illegal. Same-sex relationships, illegal. You couldn't get divorced, let alone um, um, abortions. And yet abortions happened. No matter what the law says, things will happen, whatever um, the law dictates. So let's talk about this with Richard Thompson, Director of Public Affairs and Policy at Humanist uh, UK. Dr. Anthony McCarthy is standing by, and I'll get to Dr. McCarthy in just a second. He is the Director of Education at the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children, which is, of course, a pro-life campaign group. Currently, uh, he's in Kerry. So, Dr. McCarthy, with you in just a second. Richard Thompson, you're welcome uh, this result, presumably. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, and um, yes, absolutely, it's a great result, and um, one that I think is, is, is really resounding in, in, in the strength it's shown, and I hope that Ireland uh, now moves quickly to legislate, and I hope what it also um, does is send a clear message to the UK government that Northern Ireland um, is now the one part of um, these aisles um, where abortion is still not generally available and um, uh, where women in some really serious, extreme situations can't access terminations when they need to now needs to be looked at and I hope that the UK government will now move quickly to um, bring Northern Ireland into um, both Britain and um, the South. Uh, so well we're talking about that this hour actually what can Theresa May do what what do you want to be uh, happening in, in Northern Ireland now what should the next move be seeing as a uh, this uh, landslide victory uh, is, is is developing in Ireland? Um, so if you look at opinions from Northern Ireland, then what you see is that um, their public opinion is very much in favour of a similar change to um, what's happened in the Republic. Um, and what the UK government should realise, um, and, and what groups like the um, Committee for the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, the UN Committee, have told them repeatedly, um, is that abortion is not a matter that can be seen as devolved, but it's a fundamental human rights matter that the UK as a state mm. is responsible for. Um, and for that reason, I think it's time that the UK government should see um, there isn't even a devolved government anyway. Um, and so now um, the UK Parliament should step in um, and look to extend the abortion laws that exist in Britain to Northern Ireland. Well, I'm, I'm sure Dr McCarthy would have a, an issue with that, wouldn't you? I presume you've been hearing what Richard Thompson's had to say. Where, where, where do you stand on, on this issue, on, on what has been... a a poor day for you, and um, and you probably claim many others uh, as well. 
Yes, I think it's a very sad day. Um, what we've seen is the removal of a constitutional right, a complete removal of a constitutional right for a whole set of human beings. So that's quite an extraordinary thing, really. It's simply a removal of a right. So there is now, as it stands, as of today, there is no legal protection whatsoever for the unborn. So the unborn are, are, are given zero. They're not given, you know, just a few slight rights. At, at present, we'll see what's uh, legislated uh, in the future. But I think it's a very, very... Sad day for Ireland. Um, you know, this is no doubt a terrible result. Um, but, you know, intrinsic rights are intrinsic rights. The fact that a majority of people uh, choose not to recognise them doesn't change that. Underlying m my emotions on this subject, and I underline again, I'm a man, am I allowed to uh, to, to have, have a view on this as strong as a woman? Is this a woman's issue? These are all the questions I'm, I'm putting out. What about the rights of the unborn child, Richard Thompson? Well, I think that um, the very language that you use is, 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 is difficult because... Why? Um, Why? What? Okay, yeah. let's get really right down to this. Why is that difficult? What do you want me to call an unborn child if it's not an unborn child? It's, it's a fetus. It's a collection of cells that haven't yet developed. Oh, um, gosh, any really? Have you real, seen this? Yeah. Have, you, you know, have you got children? Uh, I don't have children. Well, if you see a scan of a 22-week, and I know that Ireland is 12 to 24 weeks, you, you can only uh, uh, get an abortion at risk of fetal abnormality, at serious risk of harm to women. If you look at your 22-year-old or 22-week-old 20, or 23 or 24-week-old child in, uh, uh, in, in, in your wife or your partner's womb, you don't go, that's just a collection of cells, believe me. Right. That's my that's my emotion coming out, Richard. You understand? Okay. Well, sure, sure. That is a and that's a very emotional reaction. Um, but the fact of the matter is, well, first of all, as you said, Ireland's only dealt with up to twelve weeks. But also, if you look at what happens in in the UK, the vast majority of terminations happen in the first trimester. Those that happen in the second trimester generally happen um, for, for some fairly compelling reasons that are not related. You know, that, that are not just because, say, someone's changed their mind or something like that, but but are related to, for example, um, certain uh, medical conditions that have only become apparent. Um, uh, you know, right. are, are, that no. have only become apparent after a certain period of time. Uh, okay, Dr. McCarthy would like to come in. Uh, I'm sorry, there's yes, there's quite a lot of misinformation there, unfortunately. I mean, trust me, it's a scientific fact that we begin at the moment of conception. That's who we are. We're all collections of cells, but we're dealing with a human being. It doesn't change. So we don't become something else. That is the moment in which our body bodily being begins. Um, the law in England allows for abortion right up to birth for disability. Uh, so we're talking nine months. Now in Ireland, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, but certainly for certain disabilities, um, we're also talking right up to birth. And we've, we know that in England about 98% of abortions are done for social reasons. So we're not talking medicine. Just give me that percentage again, Dr. McCarthy. Uh, it's about 90% are done for social reasons, usually under the mental health ground. But I mean, BPAS itself, the British Prince Advisory Service, uh, uh, admits that these are basically done up for social reasons rather than uh, serious mental health grounds. Uh, okay, Richard Thompson, so please. We're not, talking, we're not talking medicine here. Uh, okay, uh, Richard Thompson. So most abortions are done under the, uh, on the background because that's the easiest ground under which they can be accessed. That's not to say that if it wasn't so easily available that they wouldn't then be done uh, or still be possible under other grounds. Um, and the fact of the matter is that um, uh, I think it is... Well, for example, I mentioned earlier that some of them might be done under um, other medical grounds. Um, and um, the fact of the matter is... Well, um, such as because the what would the other medical grounds for the 98% be? Well, what would the other uh, medical grounds for the 98% be other than the I'm, social I'm, and the right I'm, I'm trying to explain. Can you stop interrupting me, please? Yeah, just hold, hold on a um, second, uh, Dr. McCarthy. Richard Thompson, yep. Sure. Um, the, uh, well, the certain, certain you know disabilities come to light, or um, because of uh, you know sexual crime. Um, uh, it's just because things are registered on the one ground doesn't mean they don't uh, occur on another ground. And the fact of the matter is, let's be clear about this here: the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children is not an organisation whose opinions represent uh, any real significant section of the population at all. SPART does not even support abortion when there's a fatal fetal abnormality. They do not support abortions when the mother's life is at risk. This is a real extreme organisation um, who may be trying to say, well, you know, abortion is too widely available, but it is not motivated 
and by compassion for women. Okay, Richard, I'm, I'm going to let Dr. McCarthy come back in. I'm sure he's uh, got something to say. Well, sorry, well, we just heard, I've said 98% for social abortions, and we've just heard mentioned disability and rape, which, uh, as everybody should know, is a tiny, tiny percentage of, of the abortion. So there's more misinformation, unfortunately. Um, sure, I mean, abortion is not like any other medical procedure. I think everybody recognises that. I mean, that's why we're having a debate. It's not about removing the bunion. Um, what we're talking about is destruction of a new human life, something that people only want to show on television because it's a very distressing, unpleasant thing. And I'm afraid a lot of campaigners now are talking, talking of extremes. They're talking about abortion up to birth uh, for any reason whatsoever. Now, that's not what most people want, but that is, in effect, what we tend to get when we have abortion laws well, no, it, sorry, just, just to clarify that, Dr. Dr. McCarthy, 12 to 24 weeks, um, a, a, an abortion only allowed when there is a risk of a fetal abnormality or if there's a serious risk of harm to the woman. Yeah, well, I, I, I suppose my point is that we have this mental health ground in England and the Irish one is quite similar. And what we've seen is that that does effectively translate to abortion on demand on the mental health ground. That was my point. Yeah. That, um, you know, that these things, if we look at the English figures, you know, it begins as it did in 67 with the talk about res restrictive uh, abortion, which some people vote for. But what we get is 9 million abortions over 50 years. Mm. OK, listen, I've got to leave it there. Thank you very much for your contributions. Dr. Anthony McCarthy there and Richard Thompson. Uh,